as you saw in the news there, Helen Clark has called for caution and she's urged the government not to withhold funding from the Under Fire UN agency whose staff have been accused of taking part in the Hamas attacks against Israel last October. She says it would be premature and irrational, simply outrageous, she said, and callous to cut funding when it was just 12 out of UNRWA's 13,000 workers involved. Is she right? Joining us now is Robert Patman. He's from the University of Otago. He's an international um, relations expert. Thanks for joining us this morning, uh, Professor. Morning, do, you agree, do you agree with Helen Clark? I do. I think uh, she's spot on. And uh, I think that, you know, this is... Gaza is the scene of a humanitarian catastrophe with 26,000 Palestinians dead, 70% of whom are women and children. And uh, it's a desperate humanitarian situation. Uh, nearly half the Palestinians are facing starvation. And the major platform for distributing humanitarian aid is the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, or UNRWA. And uh, it's quite, you know, it's very concerning that 12 members of UNRWA are the subject of allegations from Israel, apparently Israeli intelligence. And uh, that re information has been relayed, as we know, to the United States. And the United States and a number of other key donors, such as Germany, have suspended their aid in the meantime. So the countries that have suspended the aid, are they aligned with Israel rather than, rather than being completely um, sort of separate? Broadly, um, they're certainly among the countries which immediately declared full solidarity with Israel immediately after the appalling Hamas attacks of the 7th of October. Uh, but a number of countries, such as Ireland and Norway, and I believe New Zealand, um, are taking the view that uh, the individuals in question need to be subject to a full and independent investigation and we need to await the findings. One of the problems here, Lloyd, is that during conflicts, many actors are very keen to impose their narrative on the situation for their own political advantage. I'm not saying Israel's, Israel's doing this in this situation. I'm just saying this is what happens in war, the so-called fog of war, when there's competing narratives about what's happening. And I think it's very important that we have independent eyes to assess these allegations. I mean, the, the main allegation is coming from Israel, though. Do you think they are either lying about this or they're maybe over-egging it? They're kind of using it as a bit of propaganda. Is it not entirely true? I really couldn't comment on that because I don't know. You know, I haven't seen the precise... All I know is that the allegations that members of UNRWA uh, um, 12 members were complicit in the horrendous terrorist attack of the 7th of October. You, the UN has already dismissed those people, uh, despite the fact there hasn't been a full and independent investigation completed yet, but they've done it on the grounds that, you know, even while they're under suspicion, they shouldn't be employed. We, we shouldn't underlook, we shouldn't overlook the desperate situation that UNRWA is operating under. More than 140 members of UNRWA, that is UN employees, have been killed since the 7th of October. Now, by definition, they were not involved in the 7th of, Ham the 7th of October Hamas attack. They were killed simply doing their work, and it's multifaceted work, um, distributing humanitarian aid, but also providing education for displaced people. The, the million dollars that New Zealand provides to UNRWA, um, at Clark said, Helen Clark said that that uh, gets, gets processed in June. I think she said that's when it gets paid. So we've still got some time for the, I mean, the investigation to find out you know, whether they can be presumed guilty here. Is that enough time? Will we find out before June whether this actually happened? Uh, I, would, yeah, I would hope so. I mean, uh, I think uh, it should be quite possible with the legal expertise available to quickly find out if there are real substance behind these allegations. But we've got to put this in perspective. Um, this, as your uh, introductory remarks indicated, uh, 13,000 people work for UNRWA and the allegations are made about 12 of them. Also, Israel does have, and I'm not casting aspersions here, but Israel has been highly critical of the UN throughout this crisis and before. Uh, it shouldn't be forgotten that the Israeli ambassador to the UN um, demanded the resignation of the Secretary General, uh, Antonio Guterres, when he suggested there were context or some history before uh, that led to the events of the 7th of October. So there is some tension there between the Israel and, and the UN. 
Yeah, I guess you heard Helen Clark say that Israel wants UNRWA disestablished as well. So that you know, maybe there's that at play as they well. They have um, gone on record as saying that. Yes. So you know that could be one of the motivating factors for them to maybe embellish a bit more about this. Yeah, but I, I don't understand Israel's position if that is true, um, because ultimately Israel has to find a way of getting greater security for itself and making the lives of Palestinians, their neighbours, more and more difficult is not going to do that. And uh, clearly, already, a lot of innocent Palestinians who had nothing to do with Hamas have perished, 70% uh, of whom, as I, as I said before, women and children. So that's not a situation that's likely to, you know, reinforce uh, or boost Israel's security going forward. There's going to be a lot of very hurt and angry people who had nothing to do with Hamas, but they've lost their lives or their family members have lost their lives. Thank you very much for your time this morning. That is Robert Patman, Thank you. Uh, Otago University international relations expert.